Okay, so this time we'll look at a more challenging curve sketching problem, right? So we've got a polar curve um, defined by the equation r is equal to 1 plus cos theta. Um, typically, this is how polar curves are presented. Uh, often in this form, r is some function of theta, okay? Um, and actually, polar curves, if you have, so one here's just a side note before we dive in, okay? If you have r equal to some function of theta, right? Um, it's a polar curve, but it's actually, this is a special type of parametric curve because y is r sine theta, x is equal to r cos theta. So actually, um, what this gives me is that x is r, which is f of theta, cos theta, y is f of theta sine theta, right? Um, so if you're using software to plot something like this, um, probably your software has something that's adapted to polar functions. Um, so there's probably some kind of polar curve command. Um, and if your software doesn't have a polar curve command, well, it's simple to take a polar curve and turn it into a parametric curve, right? We just take the function of theta and we multiply by cos theta and sine theta to get x and y, and we use the parametric plotting utility. So this is a useful thing to keep in mind. Right, now, on to the plot. Typically what we do when we're actually trying to plot the polar curve is we don't bother getting back in terms of x and y. Uh, what we do is uh, we, we kind of act, we want to be like a human sort of spirograph, right? Polar curves, they're like those, you know, if you ever had one of those spirograph toys when you were a kid, right, where you, um, you spin the thing around and the pencil kind of moves back and forth, right? So the, the R value changes as you spin it around. That's, those are polar curves. Those spirograph curves, they're polar curves. And so what you typically do is you kind of start at zero, right? And you, you t kind of say, okay, if r, when theta is equal to zero, we're over here. And you kind of work your way around, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, right? And you, and you just kind of work your way around the unit circle. And for each of the angles where we kind of know the value on the unit circle, Yep, you plot the given r value. And the first couple times you do this, you just actually do a direct kind of plotting, right? So you maybe even do a table of values. So you might even do kind of theta r, right? 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, so on. Um, I'm not going to go, I mean, I'm going to run out of board before I get all the way around the unit circle. Um, but then we can start plotting the r values, right? Cos theta, cos of 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, and then I get 1 plus root 3 over 2, right? Uh, 1 plus root 2 over 2. 1 plus a half. Then I get 1, right? And if I were to keep going, right, once I get into the second quadrant, r becomes negative, right? So then I'm going to have, if I were to keep going, uh, you know, to... Uh, 2 pi over 3, I have 1 minus a half. Then I'm at 3 pi over 4, and I've got 1 minus root 2 over 2, and so on, right? Um, when I get to pi, right, when I get down to here, actually I'm at r equals 0. 1 minus 1, I get 0, right? And so you can, you can sort of try the first couple times actually just plotting those points, explicitly plotting them. So we start out at 1, 2, and we, we plot a point. Then we go up to pi over 6, and we're a little bit further in, right? A little bit further in. We're at like 3 over 2. And you try actually plotting these points. So once we get to pi over 2, we're at 1. So we have 1. We have, yeah, about here, right? About there. And you try to just sort of plot the points. We go around. Now we're getting smaller r values, right? And then we get to r equals 0. And then you kind of, so you get to there. And then you keep going, and actually you have some symmetry, right? So what you get here is you kind of get, if you connect the dots, you get something that looks like this. Okay? So there's your curve so far. Right? And now, cos theta is even, right? So the other half is just going to be a mirror image of what we have so far. So 
we're going to get something like that. So we get something that's vaguely heart-shaped. And actually, um, there's a name for this curve. It's called a uh, cardioid because of the, the heart shape that you see for that, right? Um, so what you typically do, right, this gets really tedious. You don't want to actually plot points because also, like, you know, you're trying to measure by hand, like, distance of two. Okay, now I'm going to go to... 30 degree angle, and I'm going to try to go at a distance of 1 plus root 3 over 2. Like, come on, what is, like, out 1 point, you're like, you know, that's hard to do. So what you try to do really is you sort of, you try to eyeball it and it takes some practice, but you get used to saying, okay, look, um, start with the easy ones. It's going to be r is 2, r is 1, r is 0, at 0, pi over 2, and pi, right? And then you just say, well, look, R has got to decrease as we go from there to there. So, you know, I should get a little bit closer to the origin. So I should shrink as I go in. And, you know, you can kind of, you could give yourself a, like a reference circle if you wanted to as kind of a guideline. And so you should be getting further away from the edge of the circle as you come in, right? And you kind of keep getting closer and closer and you just bring it in. Um, so with a bit of practice, you can get the hang of drawing these polar curves. Um, it's not an art contest. It's never going to be perfect. Um, and one of the ways that you, you do this is you, you learn a lot of the standard polar curves. You're going to learn the cardioids and the limassons, and there's, there's a whole gallery of them in the textbook. And so you kind of start getting the idea of what these polar curves look like, what the equations look like, and so you can recognize um, what it should be by the equation, and you just kind of you do your best, right? And mostly when you're plotting, you're, the reason we want to plot these is we want to you know, do things like area, right? And if you're doing area problems, you want to have some pictures so you know what it is you're calculating, especially if you're trying to calculate the area between polar curves, then you really got to get an idea of what's going on.